Hello everyone, this is Minister Freddie Lee Peterkin, and I have a thought that I would like to share with you today because truly God is amazing and miracles He do perform in the lives of those who are willing to allow themselves to adhere to His Word and to those who are willing to allow themselves to come under the subjection of His righteousness. So I would like to thank God for granting me yet another opportunity to be among the living. Because it's always a blessing and as well as a pleasure to be able to share with you words of wisdom. For there is no greater understanding than to be brought into the light of God's truth. That we must be willing to allow ourselves to be conformed or should I say changed by the renewing of our minds. Now I'm saying this as a matter of fact because each and every day. We are constantly being challenged by all sorts of temptations that would uh, have us to fall short of God's glory. And for this very reason, we shall always be constantly, uh, should I say, we shall always be challenged by the spirit of carnality. Because we are trapped within the prison, this flesh of ours, this body of ours, this human design, and everything about it goes contrary, or should I say, against the will of God. You see, good and evil are not just out there in the world as we know it. They are both on the inside of us. They are both inside of us battling one against the other to gain control of our very existence. So this is why the Bible said that because of one man's sin, sin entered into us. In other words, because Adam sinned, sin then entered into humanity and then death followed thereafter. And this is the reason why the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And for this very reason, because the sin principle is fixed and operating within us, it causes us to become a slave to our flesh and also to the ever-increasing impurities and the wickedness that plagues this earthly body. Again, this is why the Word of God says that the wages of sin is death. Now listen to me now. In other words, we do not have to die a physical death in order to live a ghostly existence. Let me say that again. We do not have to die a physical death in order to live a ghostly existence concerning God. Because the Bible said to be condemned is enmity against God. In other words, we then become an enemy of God. Not only does we become enmity to God, but then the Bible says to be carnally mind is death. In other words, let me put it this way. In other words, when we allow ourselves to become subjected to the laws of our flesh, to allow ourselves to walk in the path of our fleshly desires, we then become dead, or should I say spiritually dead in the eyes of God. Now this is why the preacher man says that God does not hear the cries or the prayers of sinners. And the reason being because, you know, the heart of men, it is deceitful and is desperately wicked for who can know it. Because each and every time we allow ourselves to act in accordance to the laws of our flesh, we are then, or should I say, we then become dead, or should I say uh, uh, spiritually dead, in the eyes of God. Because there is nothing good that dwells in our flesh without the presence of God's Holy Spirit because there is no way that we can possibly bring our flesh or bring our minds under the subjection of the righteousness of God without the help of God. Now this is the very reason why the Apostle Paul went on to say it, that he said, I beseech you therefore my brethren by the mercies of God that you present yourselves a living sacrifice holy unto God and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then he went on to say, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that what is good and that acceptable and that perfect will of God. Now he listened to this. This is the very reason why the philosopher went on to say that in order for us to do better, we must think better. Hence, uh, therefore, as a man thinketh, so is he. And let me expound on that a little bit more. In order for us to think better and to do better, we must allow ourselves to come under the subjection of the righteousness of God by having our minds renewed. In other words, in order to better deal with this spirit of carnality and all of these wicked things that work within our flesh that causes us to go contrary to the will of God. In other words, we got to remember and bear in mind that the spirit of temptation is strong within our flesh. Therefore, we must constantly seek the righteousness of God in order that we are not being led like sheep 
to a slaughter. In other words, I can go on and on all day long talking about temptation. I can talk about temptation from the Hebrew uh, point of view. And even I can dive a little bit deeper and try to explain to you why temptation and the spirit of carnality work together. And even why the enemy will use that to entice us. But I don't want to waste too much of your time today or wear out my welcome. So I want to leave you with this thought today. And listen to me very close as I leave you with this because the key to attacking or to key to handling or defeating temptation is we must have a strong faith in the Word of God. Let me say that again. The key to defeating temptation is that we must have a strong faith in the Word of God by allowing ourselves, listen to me, by allowing ourselves again to be brought up under the subjection of the righteousness of God so that we can better deal with these things because there is no reason why we should continue to travel this road of, of, of life, of falling behind our, our selfish, or, or should I say our fleshly desires, and not have our spirituality and morality called into question. Because it is our responsibility to take responsibility for the choices that we make. It is our responsibility to take responsibility for our own action. And especially when we have come into the light of God's truth. That we must allow ourselves to come under the subjection of the righteousness of God. Better yet, that we can no longer turn a blind eye to those temptations that have come to challenge us. We must set our sights upon a, a broader horizon to transcend the ill wills of our imagination that will have us to, of the desire to have us to turn away from the will of God by causing us to become a prisoner to our flesh. But I thank God for Jesus today. Because of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, it has allowed us the opportunity to walk into the glory and the righteousness of God by faith through Christ's Holy Spirit. Amen to that. Through Christ's Holy Spirit. In other words, this is why the Bible said that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have obtained our peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, wherewith we have also gained access to enter into His glory. By doing this, it has allowed us to be able to stand and to rejoice and in the hope and in the glory of God. For the Bible said that God can do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask or ever think through His Spirit that works within us. Now this is when we can honestly say that great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. For the Bible said, for those of us who have overcome our temptations and of course through the help of God's Holy Spirit, we shall receive the crown of life. My friends, I stop by to share this thought with you today. That although temptation may be a great deceiver, but the power and the Spirit of God is far greater. Listen to me now. It doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter what your circumstances or your situation may be. But whenever we allow ourselves to trust in the power of God, He will deliver us. Did you hear me? He will deliver us when we allow ourselves to trust in the power of God. Because I'm going to tell you right now, it's nothing that we can do outside of ourselves without the help of God's Holy Spirit. And we got to hold on to that, even though temptation may come to try and test us. We must hold on to the faith in God that he will bring us through. Because he is the one created us, and he is the one to make us. And only he can deliver us. Thank you so very much. You have been listening to Minister Freddie Lee Peterkin.